Euh, je peux vous dire que je suis un très bon chasseur. Ha! Oh oh. Euh, je peux vous dire que je suis un très bon chasseur. Ha! Oh oh. Euh, je peux vous dire que je suis un très bon chasseur. Ha! Oh oh. Euh, je peux vous dire que je suis un très bon chasseur. Ha! Oh oh. Euh. Ok, Emma. So you got a nice little scene here. I love the little mice sitting around this little pool, swimming in it. It's very cute and clever. Um, I'm finding a couple things um, in your work that you'll have to focus on. One is right here, like in your in-betweens, you're losing volume. When, whenever the head is going like this a lar large head and then it shrinks and then it gets bigger because you're hitting the pose and then even here it goes look how small that head gets and then it expands and inflates so it's like his head is shrinking and enlarging so you want to always want to make sure your values I mean your volumes are um, consistent one way to do that is just to do a, like a master drawing it's what one of my lead animators calls a golden drawing a golden key <clears throat> and he'll keep it floating around somewhere he can pull it in and check check the volumes just to make sure that um, that it's working um, the other thing to do is when you're posing out your stuff choose a few key poses where you really make sure that those three or four key poses depending on how long the scene is and the action um, they're at key points and you you nail down the volumes on those and then you measure everything else off of those so um, that will keep you consistent. I'm finding the walk is a little awkward, although that's it's it's working. I can't say it's not working, but there does seem to be a little bit of sliding, like his back foot is sliding on that bit, and here there's like a slip, like he's on ice. But that right foot is slipping, his right foot. Um, so just watch your feet. And make sure you're not sliding too much and especially not rising up and down but you do it yeah see you're sliding there as well so just watch your feet um i think the you can work a little bit more on the lip sync You've, you're getting some of the shape some of that's nice some of that's nice but you can push it even more you the, especially in a cartoon character, uh, one design like this, the mouth is extremely elastic. So you can really push it around. You can have that tongue and that open mouth on one side and it swings to the other side. Um, there's a lot you can do with that kind of a shape. And um, one of the things you, you think about as an animator is when you first get your uh, character that you're working with, that you think about the potential movements uh, and shapes of that of the the design the facial expression how is that a big mouth a small mouth what are the limitations some characters will have smaller lim some limitations on what the mouth can do you always want to find out where you can push always push um, and find the range of motion that is most acceptable for your character So I'm be able to read all this. This is nice because this whole section here, you know, if you were to finish it off, it's very simple. I'm not having to follow it around. It's not a hundred percent. I mean, it's it's not as expressive as it could be, but this is kind of nice. These little poses here that you have, nice posture. I can see you've got some really nice, thoughtful um, things happening here with the face and the construction. Of everything very nice I love the way the hand is there and the way you got the finger going around so that that's nice this one in front of that one kind of thing um, and it's nice that you kept the teeth in there because it adds so much character um, you got a little bit of an anticipation here I would push it even further sometimes if you're working loose you can try things, experiment while you're animating. Not everything you draw right the first time is the way you do it. You can push that anticipation and then play it and see if it's working. If it's giving you a certain pop. Whenever you have an anticipation in one direction before it moves in another direction, it gives it a sense of snap and urgency. Um, so that helps to sell the kind of work 
uh, a movement that you're doing here but there might be just a few one two three one two three yeah one two so you get two in-betweens in there but they're on fours you could probably put that on twos and that would get in there fine but you want to stay in this because he's doing this huge movement down to this one mouse and as as soon as he stops on the frame just one frame the frame after when he gets down you've already got him moving so he's not living in that spot where he spent all that energy getting to to settle it's just like a ping. it's it's like a, a ping pong or watching a pinball machine um, you want to live you want to get into poses and live in those poses sometimes it doesn't take much but you get down there you do an extreme overshoot you settle back in there just to give you know maybe six to eight frames if you can in that moment because that's it takes about six to eight frames for the audience to to catch something not necessarily see it but to catch it and feel it um, and then then you stay there before you turn and move over here now it's nice that you've got this little head turn here but given the energy of him coming down like this I would want like this pose to be more like the other one where he's going down he's, he's still in that movement of coming down so you want the head to sort of follow that right So he's down and now he goes, oops, he's down and now he goes here. So he's moving in this direction rather than coming back and doing that like you've got. And you can get over there, won't I? Here, here I would not have it on twos, just put it on ones. It's such a fast movement and you want that extra time, just a few frames is in, could make a difference in a pose. And here you're just going into a pose. Always think about how you go into poses and then how you live in the pose and then you get out. Very often you're not just going to a pose and holding there. You're living in there. There's, there's a bit of action going on. It may feel like he's going into a pose, but there's going to be like some drifting or some growing or some some restabilization, uh, catching his balance, something could, else could be happening there. It's not just a hold, but how you get into it and come out of it is very important to make it read. Um, generally what I do is I will, let's say I have, let's say this is my key. This is key two, I've got key one, key two, and then key three. So the idea is to go from here to here um, what I'll do is I will, and I, I think I've explained this in another video, go to an extreme. So you go to an extreme key to, and then you might have a key to A and then a key to B that's sort of working through this. So you've got four, three or four different keys allowing you to live in that space so that it's legible and it's alive the audience can read it and it's kept alive it doesn't have to be a lot of dramatic stuff it could be very little subtle subtle things that are happening in there but that's generally how i think of things and in fact sometimes i will think of keys as having let's say i, I got three and i'm going to say i like that three but i want to try some things so i'm going to go to an extreme key three and then I'm going to have um, uh, a, a key three A, a key three three B let's say a key three C so he's I'm working within all of this and then I'll come back here with like a let's say key three zero for sort sake of argument um, that it will actually be the first landing one within that so I'm working within that to live in that pose. So I'm still living in the pose, um, <clears throat> but I'm thinking about the action 
and um, the think the thought process that's going into this. some of this will be physics some of this will be will be the character reacting or acting or thinking through something so um, you work out what that's going to be and then getting in in and out of them is going to be very important how you land it and take off from it so that's the way I look at keys so here he's sort of melts a little bit too much and then goes into here so I mean because he's shrinking given the speed of everything that has to happen in a section aggression aggression don't and then then the the subtle like see I told you so so it's not like oh man it's really bad and then he's getting into it it's more like bum 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 right that's the beats um, so you want to make sure you're living there and in what you've done here is you're just moving into it um, you're just going into that key and you're not giving you should probably do an extreme or settle into it a little bit slower but you want to stay you want to make sure that you're living in that pose a little bit longer than it is and it feels like you're snapping into it so you've got a lot of, a lot of that will be just be like taking out a lot of these drawings so um, I would get rid of these drawings and just move up into that as quickly as you can boom get in there get into that pose because that intermediate stuff isn't really selling anything in your scene um, so anyhow that's just this, in terms of thinking of phrasing and breaking down the beats he's walking in he does the little gestures i used to be the greatest uh, chaser and then first attack second attack and then huh see so if you can break things down in those simple terms it will help you